Thanks, Rob. So lots of support there for Qureshi down on court four. Was someone who was certainly not short of any support during his time at Wimbledon, Tim Henman joins us. Thanks so Great. much for joining no us, Tim. Well, where do you want to start? Should we talk about Nadal? Where do you want to start? <laughs> what do it you was think? amazing, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, we were, I was um, doing the highlights last night and, and um, it was just so unexpected. I mean, I can't honestly say I, I knew much about Russell and, and um, he just kept hitting harder and harder. And I made this sort of analogy. It was a bit like soddling at, at the French. Um, you know, he plays very, very flat, um, not a lot of spin, but is just able to make life very, very difficult for his opponents. And, and um, it was an unbelievable performance. Well, it's a way to make Rafael Nadal play worse as well. I mean, I always uh, go back to Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi. I mean, I'm sure that when Andre Agassi was serving and he was up 30 love, Pete Sampras would intentionally send balls into the stands <laughs> just to not give Agassi the rhythm. And that's what you do against Nadal. And that's what Russell did. Because Nadal didn't play that great, but was he allowed to? No, that's right. And when you, you, you look at the, um, you know, the nature of the match, obviously going into the fifth set, you, you thought that perhaps Nadal's experience would pay off, but Russell was the one that uh, you know, got the early break. And as, as you say, he just kept, he kept hitting harder and harder, closer to the lines. And, and for me, the most important thing, it looked like he didn't think about it too much. If he had, if he had, had time to think, then um, you know, maybe it would have been a different outcome. But it was an unbelievable performance. And, and now it's going to be interesting to see whether he can you know, back that up, because he hasn't got an easy match against Kohlschreiber. Of course, that's very difficult for you and um, I to think that how can you go into a match not thinking that much? I mean, what a, what a freedom that must be. That's right. And when you, uh, when you look at the shots that he hit, um, you know, nerves didn't really come into the equation. He just kept, he kept going for the serve and kept going for the forehand. He kept going for everything. And, and you can see, you can see by his reaction here and, and certainly the interview that he did straight after the match. And then even the interview, it was like an hour and a quarter after the match. He was still, he was still in shock. And um, yeah, I, I expect he woke up this morning and thought, you know, did that really happen? And I think he was playing doubles today that will probably help him because it will get his mind, you know, focused on something else apart from that match. And then when he comes in um, tomorrow, he's got to he's got to start all over again because he doesn't want to have that an incredible win, open up a section of the draw and then not take advantage of it. He's third on court 19 later on. And um, we had Goran Ivanisevic in here earlier and he said that he didn't think Nadal was playing well even in the first round. But did you see that coming? Did, did, did you see that coming at all? No, not at all. And, and um, you know, Rafa is, is the master at winning when he's not playing his best. And he does it time and time again and get through to the latter stages. That's when he produces his best tennis. So um, this and, and I saw some of his interviews before the tournament and Rafa said, you know, this is it's always dangerous. And he always respects the opponent. He respects the, the round of the tournament. And this was a classic example. And I think it's, uh, I'm a massive Rafa fan, so I'm sad for him that he lost. But I think it's great for tennis that these upsets are possible because the top four have done such a good job of getting through to the semi-finals so consistently. This proves that they're still vulnerable. They know that if they don't play their best and someone hits a hot streak, they can be in trouble. Well, so did you. You got through to the semi-finals here four times. And if it wasn't for Pete Sampras, we always say that, well, then, uh, Tim, you would have most probably won at Wimbledon. <laughs> You're but kind. Then, You're but kind. then one year, yeah. Pete Sampras wasn't in your way. And yeah. Goran Ivanisevic, oh, who was thanks. here, he was in your way. Mm. Uh, Obviously, that year, the draw opened up for you, same mm. way that the draw is opening up for Andy Murray now. Uh, how difficult is it <laughs> and, and how important is it for Ivan Lendl and the team around to keep yeah. him, uh, to stay in the present? Because yeah, exactly. it's a very tricky road. Yeah, you, you've hit the nail on the head. And, and um, for Murray to take advantage of Nadal losing, he has to get to the semi-finals. That doesn't impact him, you know, if he loses before that, obviously. And the only time he would have been able to play Nadal is in the semis. So, you know, he has to really, as you say, stay in the present tense. He's got to, he'll be very pleased to have got through his, his match against Karlovic. That was just uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but now he's got another difficult match. He plays Bagdatis, who's a, is a Grand Slam finalist, and, and he knows that he's going to have to, to play well. And, you know, hopefully next Friday, a week today, when he's in the semi-finals, we can say, oh, it's fantastic. He's not playing Rafa, he's playing X, Y or Z. But it's, um, it's really Andy's job just to, to concentrate on what he's doing, his preparation and his performance. And it's up to us to speculate who he's going to play in the semis. Yeah. I've got a really fascinating tweet from David Law here. This is from, he's read, well, clearly Twitter wasn't around in 2002, but he's mm. picked up this point from 2002. Uh, he says, Sampras Agassi lost early on the Daily Mirror headline the next yeah. day. No pressure, Timbo, but choke now. 
and will we'll never, never forgive, forgive you. you. Yeah. So you, you obviously... And I'd only won one round, and they were in the other half. So I, I won my first round on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday. Sampras Agassi and Safin lost and then I turned up Thursday morning ready for my second round match and they were in the other half and that was the and that was the headline and I made a conscious effort never to read the newspapers and I remember coming into the locker room and there were about four or five players all sitting there reading the reading the paper and <laughs> I didn't know and then suddenly they say have you seen this and I see the headline it said it just said Tim dot 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 if you choke this year we'll never forgive you and I was like Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah, well, you obviously did, did an unbelievable job because you did reach the semi-finals four times. Uh, and uh, Andy Murray, I think sometimes we think, oh, it's so hard to play uh, with a lot of pressure here. But he talks about it. And he's very good at it, saying that, mm. well, actually, it helps me once the tournament started. It seemed to have helped you, too. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I loved it. And I didn't view it as pressure. I, I, I viewed it as a great opportunity. And I came here first time as a six-year-old with my mum. And I watched on Centre Court and I saw your countryman and my hero Bjorn Borg play and, and uh, I remember saying you know that's that's what I want to be a part of so it was for me it was always a dream to go out on centre court and, and uh, I had unbelievable support and, and, and I thrived in those conditions I didn't feel like it was a burden I didn't feel like it was extra pressure I just wanted to go out there and, and enjoy what I was doing and, and you know I had good results on grass and and uh, it made me play better. I had a lot of my best results of my career here. And, and I think Murray's the same. I don't think he, you know, he doesn't dwell on what's said in the papers or said on television. He knows he's got to concentrate on what he's doing. And he's, he's a good enough player that if he does that and he plays well, then he's going to win the majority of his matches. You say that you think he's the same in that he doesn't listen to the press or, or read the papers. But do you think he enjoys it like you did here at Wimbledon? Um, it's a good question. I, I loved it. Um, I think he enjoys it. I don't know whether I enjoyed it more, but um, he, he has done very well with it. He doesn't um, appear to enjoy it, then. No, but he, that's the way he is. You know, he doesn't like to give too much away. And, and um, I think he, he, he's, he's certainly, um, you know, yesterday, for example, he, he did a good job of really not getting frustrated, playing Karlovic when the guy's serving out of a mountain it's um you know it, it is it is difficult but uh, no he's doing he's doing a really good job and and i think lendl helps him um being in his team he's a lot of experience and and um you know it's he's won two matches so far and he's got plenty to build from what did you make of karlovich's comments afterwards about there being possible sort of partisan line judges yeah pretty football? disappointing I, I think if you're trying to question the integrity integrity of this tournament then you're probably going to be on your own and and uh, i thought it was very interesting that um you know rafa lost and in his press conference you know he sat there and he said you know what you know anything i say right now is is going to be portrayed as an excuse and i give my opponent credit he played a great match and that's that's enough said and you got karlovic complaining about footfalls you know if you're six foot ten just surely stand back a little bit further you're going to get close enough to the net as it is so not much sympathy from me yeah, do you we... think this is his year sorry Matt. No, do, do you think this is murray's year for what? To win. <laughs> <laughs> to win diplomatic. it. To beat, to beat Bagdatis. Yeah. No, no, he's, just, he, he's got a great chance. I mean, he's a great grass court player. He's been in the semis. Um, there is an opportunity, obviously, with Nadal going out, but it's such a long way to go. You know, if we're sitting here next Sunday and he's in the final, then, you know, it'd be fantastic. And I, and I think he can. He's that, he's that good.